Hey everyone, it's Erin from the Painted Tin Bin. So this design video is going to be how to do buffalo plaid or buffalo check, buffalo plaid check, whatever you call it, looks like plaid. So um, I today am going to do it on this six inch uh, whimsical heart magnet that I just had laying here in the shop. Now you can do this, excuse me, on any shape um, that we have. And the only caveat is, is that the other than paint and the piece of whatever you're going to do, the other thing that you need um, is painter's tape. So my suggestion is, is to go get some good painter's tape. A lot of times people like to try and use uh, like a scotch tape or a masking tape. And sometimes that works. However, I have found with those two tapes that there's some bleeding and it just doesn't give a nice crisp line. So um, go get whatever width of um, painter's tape you need for to make your buffalo plaid check. So since I'm doing a smaller shape, I am going to opt for my skinniest uh, painter's tape that I had in the shop. I do believe they make one about half this size. So this is, I believe, just under an inch. So they do make one that's smaller than that. Um, if you're doing a larger shape, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna back up and show you this piece. So if you're gonna do a larger shape, um, I would suggest getting the two inch wide or one inch wide. Two or it would be my suggestion, one inch may be a little busy. So um, there are a variety of ways you could do it. There's a variety of widths that you can use. So just use whichever is um, your preference. Obviously using the two inch tape on my little six inch magnet isn't gonna work. So um, what you're gonna do is you're always gonna start with the lightest color first. So I'm going to be doing just a pink and white super classic uh, color combo for the Valentine's Day holiday. And um, so my lightest color between the pink and the white is obviously the white. If you are doing um, orange and blue, orange is going to be your lightest color. Orange would need to go down first. And it does need to be pretty opaque. You can see mine's pretty opaque. I mean, it's not perfect, but again, I never strive for perfection. Perfectly imperfect creativity. That's PTB. <laughs> I feel like a used car salesman. Sorry. Um, <laughs> so um, always put your lightest color, black and yellow. Your yellow is going to go down first. Um, you know, whatever your color is, your lightest color, put it down first. Now, if you're doing a red and a black, your red's going to go down first. Um, green and black, green is going to go down. So whatever is first, it goes down. Okay. So then what you're going to do is you're going to first off, um, so I'm going to do, I'll do the largest one and this is going to be backwards for you. So I apologize. Um, you know, I'm just trying out this YouTube video thing. <laughs> it's working out really well. So I need to up my game, but I'll get to that point eventually. So I just took a little piece and, um, I'm going to put it right here. That's where I want it. Go ahead and put it down. If you're confident that that's where you want it, you can go ahead and um, really push it down, but we're gonna do that at the end as well. So, um, a lot of times what people do is they'll cut like a small piece and they'll use that as their spacer, okay? Um, so I put that little spacer down and now I know that my next piece goes right on top of it. So um, your call, you can eyeball it, it doesn't really matter. So, uh, but I just thought I'd kind of demonstrate that for you again, pick up your, your spacer, put it underneath, and then get another piece. And so you're gonna keep doing this all the way down. Um, pick one direction first. So um, I always opt to go left to right just because that's how my brain works. So, um, plus that's how you start when you're priming things. I tell you to go left to right first. So, um, now let's see that. Okay, so my spacer, there's a little bit of a tip you can kind of see there. I'm just gonna use my spacer piece because there's no need. Okay. All right, so now what I want you to do is I want you to really push down um, your painter's tape. The painter's tape does have a little bit of a uh, 
a powder to it that's actually what seals the edges so feel free to kind of you're, you're going to start seeing it on your fingertips when you're rubbing your paint down or your tape down excuse me so just make sure it's really solid uh really stuck on there the other thing is is whatever color you put on the bottom you need to make sure that it is the most driest ever okay hashtag that ever um so then what you're going to do is you're just going to go get your your paint color whatever color you're doing and you're gonna do a little little swipey swipe now i'm going for a more rustic type buffalo plaid so i am not going for a super super solid line i i will show you here shortly um I want some white streaks in it, okay? So I'm not really going for that. So when I did this one, I used a chip brush, just a really cheap chip brush, and that gives you kind of that rustic kind of feel in the paint. In, in the paint. What I'm using this, because this is really small, I, I just keep the paint really light and I'll, you know, just really push it around. You don't need a lot. I am also, since this is a magnet, going to um, make sure my edges are painted again not super perfectly but since it is a magnet you know the sides will be seen a little bit more as opposed to if it was a door hanger or something okay okay so as soon as you kind of have that done and set um, I am going to blast it with a hair dryer here for a little bit. So basically, um, if you are going to use a hair dryer when you're, when you're painting our metal, you need to use it on cool. So the cool setting on this is holding the blue button. Yours is probably different um, unless you got yours from Dollar General like I did. So um, I'm just going to blast it probably for about 45 seconds because it's really thin paint because I didn't put a ton on it. But you need to make sure that you dry it as dry as possibly can be. So, all right. long especially when you um you really push that paint around and you keep it thin so then what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and take your painter's tape off you can save it and reuse it which i am going to try to do but please know that sometimes it's just not worth it to try and reuse the tape so don't um you have a whole roll okay so oh shoot so that's what happens when you have paint on your fingers show you here in a second all right so I'm gonna get real close up so as you can see okay so I made an oopsie that was on my finger but I'm gonna show you how to cover that up um, but again my my pink is kind of pushed around it, it's kind of washy it's kind of I don't know what you want to call it I don't know it's not super opaque let's put it that way so now what you're going to do is you're going to then take your pieces of tape and go up and down. So since I need to cover that little oopsie with paint, I'm going to come in and put tape on either side of it. And again, you can use a spacer or you can eyeball it. Totally your call. I'm just gonna eyeball this one because it's faster. Probably not, but, and again, same kind of concept, either if you're reusing your tape or if you're not, that's totally fine. You don't have to. Um, you can grab new pieces of tape. I mean, you got a whole gosh darn roll, so you might as well um, <clears throat> use it. But again, same concept, but this time you're going up and down. And again, pushing it down, making sure you have a really good seal on all of your pieces. Don't worry, so I had this little piece, you know, left over. Don't worry if you have a piece left over. What that just means is that obviously my shape is longer than it is wide. 
So then same concept, gonna go and paint in between. And this right here is where I'm gonna get my little oopsies. And ain't nobody gonna know that I had an oopsies, okay? I like to come up here and kind of take some of my paint off just because I am going for that more rustic kind of look. You do not have to do that, it's totally your call. All right. Push it around. This is also where you would do a real quick look on your edges. If there's any that you feel you need. Again, quick blast with the hairdryer on cool. Take your pieces of tape off. Um, some people get really nervous ripping the tape off. <laughs> Rip it. Rip it like a band-aid. It's all good. Okay. And there you have a buffalo plaid check shape. So this is a lot easier to do. Um, sometimes people do a buffalo plaid. They'll have like, um, so they'll have the base color, which would be the white in this case. They will have the pink, you know, and then they'll have maybe like, <coughs> excuse me, a darker pink to darken these squares. Um, so two things. One, you absolutely can do that if, the, if that's your jam. Second of all, um, that's not my jam just because I don't have time to do that. Um, and, and I think it's dark enough compared to the other pieces, uh, the other sections of the stripe that I think it's totally fine. So um, I'll post a picture of this at the beginning, at the end of this video, so you can kind of see a finished product on what I do with these things. But um, this is the Buffalo Plaid Check design video. Thanks guys.